Welcome to the All in One channel. I'm Kelly Rosano, and this is Gemini, July 2012. Gemini, we start off the month with the Sun in Cancer, and this activates the area of your life that has to do with your talents, your gifts, your abilities, your money, anything we put the word my in front of. My money, my car, my house, my wife, my husband your sense of self-worth, self-respect, appreciation. So you're really looking at your assets, your inner and outer resources, your talent, your ability, your ability to make money. You're really focused on that right now and that's a good place for you. Now on July 3rd, Mars, our drive in life, the action planet, goes into Libra. And Mars in Libra is not the happiest placement for Mars because Mars rules Aries and Aries is all about the individual, what I can accomplish on my own. Aries and Mars is about the conqueror, going out to conquer the world, make things happen, single focused energy, going after what we want to get done. So then when you take that kind of energy and you put it in the we sign, we need to look at this, we need to go together, we need to make this decision together. It's not the happiest place for Mars. Although I think we'll feel some relief with Mars being in Libra now after being in Virgo for the past eight months. So there is some relief once Mars gets past the Pluto-Uranus square. I'll talk about that in a minute. So on July 3rd we also have the Capricorn full moon. So the Sun is opposing the moon and this is happening in the area of your life that has to do with other people's values, other people's talents, gifts and abilities, other people's resources, your spouse's resources, your partner's resources. So you're really looking at the money you're taking in, the money that's going out, um, the money you're earning, the debt that you have. Um, you're really looking at your financials at this time, especially the first three weeks of July. This full moon is um, a very powerful moon because it activates the Pluto-Uranus square. So the sun is in cuddly cancer and it's opposing emotionally tough Capricorn. And uh, it's triggering the Pluto-Uranus square. You have Pluto uh, in the eighth house or other people's values, your partner's values, and it's squaring Uranus in the area of your goals in life, your hopes, wishes, and dreams, your friends, where you network, um, the money that you make from the company you work for or the money you make from the business that you work for, so your money houses are really being activated uh, during this cycle of Pluto and Uranus being activated by the full moon and then Mars and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So at this full moon on July 3rd, we go into July kind of roaring because Pluto and Uranus squared off July, uh, June 24th and uh, then the sun activated it on June 29th and this is really intense energy, especially for those that have planets, points, and houses from 5 degrees to 12 degrees, Aries Libra, Cancer Capricorn, will feel this energy greatly. We are at the crest of an evolutionary wave that has been building for years. And June 24th was the first Pluto-Uranus square, and we're going to have seven of them from 2012 to 2015. The Sun activated it when it uh, caught up to Pluto on June 29th and now on July 3rd Mars has gone into Libra which opposes Uranus in both square Pluto and the full moon in Capricorn Sun opposed Moon is also sitting next to Pluto squaring Uranus so it's a very intense cycle. It's a very intense time. Everything must change. Everything must either evolve or dissolve. What is not built on love and truth 
will dissolve. Are you ready to make real changes? Do you trust yourself, Gemini? Your gut instincts, your intuition, your inner knowing. It's very important now that we go within and trust what we're getting, what we're receiving. We can still consult experts always. However, whatever is given as advice or insight, we always want to take it and put it through our own inner being, our own inner knowing to see what resonates. Uranus is pushing us for a drive towards freedom, innovation, reform, propelling us out of our cultural conditioning to make a giant leap into our future. Pluto shows us what's been hidden or denied. And this is in the eighth house with you. Pluto is in your eighth house, other people's values, your partner's values, your own um, issues around trust and boundaries. Who do I trust? Where do I need to set boundaries? It's a very sensitive area of life for you. And so you're really looking at this. Who do I trust? Who can I trust? Um, so it's very important to, to um, own what's coming up, own what you're feeling, own what's happening. Our feelings are not the enemy. Our feelings are our guidance. They're our, detector, our guidance detector that tells us what we really want and what we really need. So we all have a shadow side. Every one of us has a shadow side. And Pluto, Scorpio shows us our shadow. And it's about owning it. It's about owning our power. Pluto teaches us about power. Pluto teaches us how we get power, how we keep power, or how so Pluto we teaches us how we get power, how we keep power, how we own our power, or how we give our power away. So we're really in a cycle now and having an opportunity to look at this. How do you give your power away? Do you give your authority away to other people, to your partner, thinking they know what's best for you? You know, it's very important that we look at this now, all of us, and see how we are either owning our power or giving it away. Now, historically, Pluto and Uranus greatly accelerate social and technological advancements. And Pluto and Uranus are affecting the part of your life that has to do with your partner, intimacy, who do you trust, where do you set boundaries, other people's values, other people's money, inheritance, um, tax payoff, insurance payout, and Uranus is in the area of your life that has to do with the money you receive from the business you own or the company you work for, your goals in life, the friends that you have. So you're really looking at, you know, okay, uh, you know, do I really still want to hang out with these people, you know, or this person, or have I outgrown this relationship? You know, and so it's very good to do this at this time because we're growing and evolving, and as we grow and evolve, we make changes and it's it's important to make choices and changes at this time now Uranus is turning retrograde on July 13th through December 13th forcing us to look at what has been keeping us enslaved so how have you been holding yourself back imprisoning yourself is it in a relationship is it in a job is it in a living location is it in a family dynamic where have you been enslaving yourself Uranus rules freedom. Where do you need more freedom? Do you need more financial freedom? I think we all do. Now, one of the good things about Uranus and Aries is it is in harmonious energy flow to Gemini. Gemini and Aries sextile each other. That is a harmonious energy flow. It's not as powerful as a trine, so we have to put some effort in, but it's still good positive energy. So your way out through this intense cycle is to take the initiative, take action, and do what's right for you. Because when you do what's right for you, it's right for everyone else. Now, I'm not saying run roughshod over your partner or, or, or blow things up. I'm saying look at what's in your power. 
What can you change? Where can you take action? Because Uranus is sextiling Gemini. Uranus is sending positive energy flow to you, giving you the signal to say, hey, you want more freedom? You have to claim it. This world doesn't give us things. The world doesn't step up and say, oh, you want more self-worth? Here you go. You want more freedom? Here you go. We have to claim it. So claim your freedom. Claim what you want, Gemini. Claim what you need. And never settle for less. Now, Mercury the messenger turns retrograde at 13 degrees Leo from July 14th through August 8th, helping us discern are we living from our ego, fear, or are we living from our heart, essence, love. Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. Mercury rules our lower mind, our intellect. Uranus rules our higher mind, our genius. Mercury is retrograde in the area of your life that has to do with how you think and how you communicate. So Mercury is your ruling planet. So this is a time for you to rethink things. This is a time for you to go back over things. You know, take a look at what you've done in 2012 and what you've accomplished, what you've yet to accomplish, how you communicate with others. Leo rules the area of your life that has to do with your attitude, your intellect, your perception, how you speak, how you talk to yourself, how you talk to others. So you really do have an opportunity here to look at how you are communicating with yourself, how you're communicating with others. And Mercury is a great time to do revisions and reconsiderations and really take your time on any important decisions because we don't always know all the facts while Mercury's retrograde. And when Mercury goes direct and then later, that's when everything comes out. So that's why it's important to take our times. Now, if you've been out of work and you need a job, take the job. If you're selling a property, sell the property. But if you're buying, it's not a good time to buy a car. If you're buying a house, you really need to look at the, the contract, make sure that inspector goes through it again and again, because it's oftentimes we miss things under Mercury retrograde. You know, so it's very good to be aware of the energy that you're working with. And it, Mercury is your ruling planet. So when Mercury's in reverse, you're in reverse too. So it's a good time to rest and recharge your battery. It's a good time to do research work. It's a good time to do planning. It's not the best time to take action. It's a time to wait. The action time is coming. It will come when Mercury goes direct August 8th on. And then we're out of this Pluto-Uranus um, intense cycle that we're in right now. We are riding the waves of massive change, a change, a, a tidal wave of change. And the Cancer New Moon on July 19th also now has Mars at 8 degrees Libra opposing Uranus and squaring Pluto. Now Libra trines you. Libra trines your ascendant, it trines your sun if you have a Gemini ascendant, okay? So if you have a Gemini ascendant, it trines your ascendant. If you are a Gemini, so it trines you, okay? It trines your sun. And any planets that you have in Gemini, Libra forms a harmonious energy flow with you, a trine, okay? Libra and Aquarius are your sister signs. It forms a grand air trine. Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, grand air trine. And so Mars is now at 8 degrees, Libra, okay? And it's opposing Uranus. And this is in your love houses, the love you give to others, the love you receive from others, your creative self-expression, your goals in life, your friends. And Pluto is in that intimate house, forming a T-square to this. So Pluto is in the eighth house of your partner and intimacy, squaring Mars in your fifth house of true love and romance and creative self-expression to the eleventh house, the money you receive from the company you work for, your goals and your friends. So are you in a positive relationship? What have you been tolerating in your relationship? You may find now in July that Mars takes the lid off, okay? That um, this new moon in Cancer which is 
activating your core values, your sense of self-worth, your sense of self-respect, your sense of self-appreciation, and also are you being appreciated in your relationships? The universe really wants for you to look at this now, okay? It's really important that you look at are you being appreciated by your partner? Are you being respected by your partner? Are you being respected by other people? Are you being appreciated by other people? Are you appreciating you? Are you respecting you? Are you using your inner and outer talents, gifts, and abilities to bring in the life you want, to create the life you want. So this is really being activated now for all of us, but especially for you because it's in the relationship houses and your value houses and you know the relationships in your life and really looking at, you know, am I getting paid what we're worth? You know, well, we know what the economy's doing, so. Um, but even more than that, it, it's about what you've been tolerating in your relationships and, you know, are you getting the love that you deserve? Are you receiving the love that you deserve? Are you um, putting boundaries with people that are not loving with you? So this is a very important time, Gemini, for you to look at this. Mars and Pluto are our passion and willpower. Mars is our personal desire in life. Pluto is divine will. With Mars opposing Uranus, it invokes our, a strong desire for freedom, but also impulsiveness and rashness and intolerance. Mars square Pluto is about reform, but it's also ruthlessness, domination, and violence. And violence isn't just physical. Violence is anything that causes separation. What we think and say can wound. So if we're coming from love, we're going to use words to heal. If we're coming from fear and hatred, we're going to use words to hurt. We're going to use words to wound. And at this time, first three weeks in July and the end of June is going to be a very intense cycle. And many people that are asleep are going to be acting out in negative ways. So be aware and set your boundaries. Now Saturn is in Libra, also in the area of true love and romance and, and creative self-expression, is squaring the new moon, which is actually a good thing. This new moon on July 19th in Cancer, Sun conjunct moon in the area of your resources and your self-worth. And so you may be having challenges with your children. You may be having challenges with your partners, uh, business partners, colleagues, spouse. But what, uh, what Saturn wants us to do is to make the changes through peaceful means. Practice nonviolence. Be mindful of our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. This is really important now that we stay consciously aware. The energy is so intense it can make us want to go unconscious, but it's so important that we stay conscious and consciously aware of what we're projecting, what we're thinking, what we're doing. Are we coming from love or are we coming from fear? Are we coming to heal others through our words and actions and deeds? Are we coming to hurt others, to wound them, to be violent towards them, to be negative? And that's all lower energies. It has nothing to do with fifth dimension or higher consciousness. And so the new moon in Cancer is asking us to take care of our inner needs. What do you need, Gemini, to feel safe, secure, and balanced? We act out in negative ways through ignorance and exhaustion. Many folks are deeply asleep to the enormous changes taking place now. Remember, Prime Creator is using the new moon, the full moon, the Venus transit, even the Pluto Uranus square to pour enormous amounts of goddess love light energy into us. It's the great cleansing. We're being pulled through the eye of the needle. And this is what's making people act out in strange, bizarre ways because they're not awake and they're not consciously aware. They don't know the astrology. And so they can be um, acting out in strange behavior, bizarre behavior. So be aware of this. Practice boundaries and compassion. Retaliation only fuels the negative and creates more negativity. 
it takes two to fight. If no one shows up, if only one person shows up to fight, then they can only fight with themselves. So if someone hits us with negative energy, we uh, don't, don't call them back, don't engage, because that only fuels the negativity. Do what's right for you. When you do what's right for you, it's right for them. And uh, the good news is, on July 21st, an enthusiastic Jupiter and Gemini, your sign, Jupiter is here to help you, Gemini, empower you, and bring opportunity to you, is sextiling Uranus. So you do have good stuff coming in. Even with the backdrop of the tidal wave of changes that are unnecessary, Pluto and Uranus are sextiling on July 21st, bringing brightness and igniting original perspectives. This is happening in the area of your life that has to do with money from the organization. So you could um, get some money out of the blue. You, your boss could give you a raise. You could uh, get a new job. You could uh, make some really powerful connections with people that could help you get a new job or expand your business or just meet some really good friends that are, you know, fun for you and like-minded. And of course, Venus is direct now too, moving forward, and this is wonderful, and she's helping you too. Now the sun enters expressive Leo, the lion, on July 22nd, encouraging playfulness and creative self-expression. Leo is with Mercury. Leo, the sun, is in the area of your life that has to do with communication. Uh, short distance travel, your perceptions, your attitude. Okay, so this is good energy for you because Leo is sextiling Gemini. Leo, like Aries, sextiles Gemini. Harmonious energy flow. So when the sun goes into Leo, it brings positive energy to all your Gemini. Your Gemini sun and any planets you have in Gemini and if you have a Gemini ascendant as well. So this is good news. July is an intense month, Gemini. We are being pulled into the future. Let go of what no longer serves you. Every adversity, every challenge, every setback, every handicap carries with it the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. Look for the value and the benefits in your life. Focus on what you can do. Release what you have no control over. And that includes other people. We have no control over what anyone else does or says. Our responsibility is the ability to respond, being proactive. That's what responsibility means, the ability to respond. So be proactive and remain positive because your future is very bright. Thank you for watching, Gemini. Thank you for liking and sharing my videos. Thank you for subscribing. You totally rock. Thank you for your comments, your letters, and feedback. And when you feedback on YouTube, it also gives others a chance to comment. We all have wisdom, life experience, and knowledge to share. So I really appreciate when you feedback on Facebook because I don't always get a chance to, you know, comment back with everyone. And this is a wonderful way that we can build community. Thank you to all my clients. You are so awesome. If you would like to work with me and have me take a detailed look at your astrology, your transits, what's coming up for you, and or you're interested in coaching, the link is below. You click on my PayPal page and you choose the length of the session that you want. Once I see you've made that commitment, I send you my schedule. You choose the day and the time that you want. And then we're off and running, rocking and rolling. So until next time, Gemini, keep looking up.